Well, as I like to say, it's always something. Today I'm going to work on a problem on my 2010 Prius that has been progressively getting worse. The issue that I'm noticing, and this has been going on for about maybe a month now, and it's getting worse as time goes by, is that I'm driving a car down the highway, everything seems fine, I let off on the accelerator to come to a stop because of traffic. And as I'm slowing down, I can kind of feel the car kind of jerking, shaking a little bit, as if the engine's running rough. It's very, very slight, but it's noticeable. Now, at first I thought, well, maybe it's just some rough pavement that I'm hitting where the traffic tends to stop and the pavement gets, you know, bunched up a little bit. And I let it go. Uh, last weekend, my girlfriend and I took the Prius down to Virginia Beach to do some bicycle riding. And I noticed in the traffic on Interstate 64 between Richmond and Virginia Beach that this thing had gotten to the point where the car was stopped and the engine was starting to run rough and as I started accelerating the engine would run rough up to a certain point when I get up around 60 70 miles an hour the engine was smooth yesterday we took the Prius down to Raleigh North Carolina to do some bicycle riding on some trails down there this weekend a whole week later the condition had gotten a lot worse to where I was going down the highway at about 75 miles an hour if I slowed to 65 I could feel the engine running rough now in the past it wasn't until I was like slowing down at like maybe 30 miles an hour to come to a stop in traffic that I would notice this roughness on the engine this was anything at 65 on down the engine ran rough whether I was decelerating or accelerating so today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off my intake manifold and take a look at the EGR passages on the intake manifold. I did some YouTube research, did some videos, and last fall, I think it might have been maybe October, November, I cleaned off the EGR cooler because I had a really, really rough start, a uh, really, really rough engine when I started it. And that fixed that problem. It's been seven, eight months now. This has just popped up within the last maybe month and a half and it's got progressively worse. So I'm going to take a look and see what I find on my intake uh, manifold. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to get some of this stuff apart. There's, there's other videos online that will show you. But just briefly, this has to come off. The bolt over here, bolt back here, bolt back here. It snaps in to the air cleaner box down in this area here. And this whole assembly will come out of your way your air filter box there is a bolt up here there's a couple bolts on the inside you can take this off and this will come out of your way there's a connector back here I think and then at that point there you're pretty much getting down to access to the uh, air uh, intake manifold there's a couple other little things I'll point out though now when you take your throttle body off the intake manifold you don't have to disconnect these uh, coolant uh, hoses. Just remove the two bolts, the two nuts, pick this up, slide it off to the side. If you disconnect these, you're going to drain your uh, coolant all over the place, but this does not have to come up. This does not have to be disconnected to get this intake manifold off. Now I've discovered a little trick that'll make releasing these uh, little plastic bracket clips easier. And what I found is I found that by taking a 10 millimeter socket, you can get the socket around the back side of these clips, push in on the stem of the clip, and it'll move the two spring ears in. And at that point there, you can just pop this clip right out of the hole. And that works for pretty much all of the clips that were on this harness that were in my way of getting the intake manifold off. There was one exception. Okay, this is the one exception to using a 10 millimeter socket to get the wiring harness out of your way. There's this, this plastic channel that attaches to a bracket on the intake manifold. And the reason that this one here, you can't use a 10 millimeter socket is because most of the ones I use a 10 millimeter socket on release long ways. Okay, the ears come out on the elongated direction of that clip. Well, this one here, for some reason, get, the, get it in the camera here. This one here does not release the long ways. It releases the short ways. So you're going to have to get a screwdriver or something behind this to, to get it removed. 
uh, eventually I just got frustrated and just said, well, let me just pull on it and see what happens. And I, I did get it loose. But the 10, 10 millimeter socket will work on all the other harness clips except this one. And the reason I won't work on this one is because the ears aren't on the long ends, they're on the sides of the clip. I've got my intake manifold off now. It's pretty easy, just uh, three bolts, two nuts, a uh, couple little hoses. Just want to point out a couple things. Here's my crankcase ventilation hose in the valve, which is located underneath the intake manifold. If you ever have to change one of these, it's kind of a bitch to get to this. Uh, you can get to it, but you got to remove, I think the air box comes out, and you can usually reach in from this side to get to it. Other people say they've taken the uh, splash panel off the bottom and reached up to get to that valve. Uh, I changed this last year when I was having issues with the engine running rough on start. When I disconnected this hose, some black crusty crap came out the end of it. So I'm going to want to take this off and good, put a good cleaning on it. My intake manifolds for 225,000 miles is about like I would expect. Carbon, oily. Now this here is the reason I pulled this intake manifold. There's a passage at the bottom of where the intake manifold goes into the head. And there's a small hole there. There's one in each port at the intake manifold. You can see it's kind of crap built up around it. This one's not too bad. That one's got some crap on it. That one's not too bad. Your EGR tube hooks up here on the end. And there's a passageway that runs from the EGR port all the way down this direction here. And they all make a 90 degree turn and come out at that little exhaust port at your intake manifold. And what happens is, is that the uh, EGR system on this car is pretty crappy. The uh, EGR valve crusts up, the EGR cooler crusts up, it causes issues when you're starting, engine runs, I mean, really, really rough. And um, they have to get clean. And one of the other things that you need, to get, need you need to look at when you're doing the EGR cooler and the valve is to pull the intake manifold. I I don't think it took me like 45 minutes to get this thing off. It's a pretty easy job and I need to clean out these ports. According to YouTube and some of the Prius chat groups, these ports being clogged will cause the engine to run rough uh, on acceleration, deceleration, and this needs to get done on occasion. So I'm going to try this and see what happens. All this black crap here was one insert in and out with this uh, rifle bore cleaning brush. It's a nylon brush. It only made it about halfway in. Pushed it in, pulled it out, and this is how much crap is inside there. I've, I've just started cleaning it. So we'll see how messy this is going to get. I'm going to try to dump everything on this piece of cardboard and we can get an idea of like, well, how dirty was this intake manifold? I've had to switch to a smaller uh, bore brush because the, the nylon one that I had uh, wasn't long enough and to use a bigger diameter was just uh, would get stuck in the uh, EGR port. So what I was able to do, I was able to take this brush here and just kind of run it up on the sides like a bottle brush, just scrub it, scrub it, scrub it, scrub it. And I've got a for lack of a better word, a shit ton of crap out of it. This pile is about an inch tall in the middle. I know you can't see it on the video, but I haven't even done the ports yet going to the uh, uh, intake. And this is a crap that just came out of the big tube, the EGR passage that runs the length of the intake manifold. So using this smaller brush, I'm able to turned. I'm able to go into the port here, uh, force it through. It's pretty tight fit. I mean this has got crap in it. Come on back out. I mean, that, was a, that was a pretty stiff uh, push to get that through. But that's how clogged this thing is. You run this one here. This one doesn't look bad, but when I go to push through it, yeah, there's crap in it. It's a stiff push. This one here looks pretty much clogged at the end. Yeah, crap. Yeah. 
And here's some of the oily carbon, it's almost like mud or putty that's uh, getting built up in the ports that are coming to the intake. Now, the long EGR uh, channel here was pretty much this dry, powdery crap. But once everything turned and got to where it goes into the intake, that's where everything got kind of gummy and sticky. So I'm gonna end up having to do is I'm gonna end up having to get myself some uh, brake cleaner or some purple power and really finish uh, cleaning this stuff up. It's like a oily tar substance. So I managed to save most of the uh, powdered crap that came out of my uh, intake manifold. And you can see that's quite a bit of dry stuff. This is just the stuff that I was able to get out with a uh, bore brush. It didn't include the stuff that was uh, kind of gunky and I ended up having to clean out with the brake cleaner and with the uh, purple power and then rinsing it out with water but uh, that's a considerable amount of crap that was in that EGR passageway on my intake manifold so I've got my intake manifold completely cleaned out now I went and got a new gasket at the auto parts store the EGR passageway is completely cleaned all the little EGR ports on the intake manifold or cleaned off, cleaned out, and I've gone in and I've cleaned off my head here for the intake manifold. Now it's just a matter of uh, bolting everything up, getting it torqued, and then starting the engine and see what happens. So I've got everything back together, got my intake manifold on with the new gaskets in place, got the throttle body back on, took my time, made sure that all my hoses were reconnected, made sure that all of the electrical connectors were connected. The um, Intake manifold is torqued to 21 foot-pounds, which is about 250 inch-pounds. Put that on, torqued everything down, and at this point I'm ready to start my engine and take it for a drive and see what I get. I just got back from taking my car around the block for a test drive. And in my neighborhood of blocks, about five or six miles, I live out in the countryside here in Hanover County, Virginia. About 10 minute drive. and. I can say having cleaned out those EGR passages in my intake manifold that uh, I no longer have an issue with the engine running rough when I'm at a low speed or decelerating or any of that stuff. It's fixed. I did have the engine run rough for about two seconds after I started the car and it kind of reminded me of the roughness that was present when the uh, EGR cooler was clogged that I cleaned several months ago. I thought, well, now what is it? You know, what's going on here? It cleared up, and as I drove around, I thought about this a little bit, and what I realized was that I had sprayed a bunch of uh, brake cleaner into the intake manifold itself, not the intake manifold, the intake ports on my engine. There was some oil and some crap in there, and I did my best to try to clean everything out with a rag. And I think what had happened was I had sprayed it up in there with the brake cleaner, and my fuel injectors are up in there, and I had running this rag around I may have just smeared some crap across the fuel injector and it took it a few squirts to clean out and for the engine to run smooth. If you have a problem similar to mine on your Prius this is something that's pretty easy to do you can do it in a couple hours on a Saturday I recommend before you start though you get some brake cleaner some purple power get yourself an intake manifold gasket and you get yourself a brush kit to clean out these passages because just trying to spray it out with brake cleaner is not going to do it. You've got to get something mechanical up in there and uh, ream this crap out of it. And I was able to do this, I would say two hours. Of course I had to stop because I've got a camera going. I'm setting up the camera. I'm doing a little bit of shoot here to make a video for everybody. But this is not a very difficult job. 10 millimeter socket, 12 millimeter socket, the uh, torque on the intake manifold. You need a torque wrench for that. Um, other than that, this is a very, very simple job. So thanks for watching, and if anybody's going to tackle this job on air car, best of luck. Take care.